Yo, people, welcome back. Welcome back. You already know what time it is. It's time for London Clubs Carnage. I'm telling you, listen, let me make sure I get Lawless and Toby there for their, their usual scraps. I don't want to get that wrong. But listen, it's good to be back. Um, and listen, I'm joined by the cast and crew. It's, there's been, well, two teams actually on this on this panel playing each other at the weekend. We decided to have a lovely snooze fest, which is just brilliant. Um, and Toby's the only man here to, to really feel off the run of the weekend, I feel like, because everybody else is probably just going to move on quite swiftly from the weekend. But but Toby's obviously dropped points a little bit. But Toby, how you doing, bro? I see that lovely wooden, uh, what is that? Wooden Spurs picture in the background. That looks yeah. great. It really yeah, does. Big, I ain't going to lie. Big, it does look great. Big Steve. Big Steve got gifted it to me, man. What a guy. Legend. It was nice. I put it up when I was doing my watch long. So, um, yeah. How am I doing? Not good, man. Not good. It's not been a, it's been a pretty poor two weeks for us man like it's just <laughs> everything that could go wrong is going wrong and it it seems as if like we we might have blown our our advantage but i'm not giving up just yet mm, yeah it's gonna be an interesting one lawless talk to me bro how are you feeling because i mean <laughs> at this point you're 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 more of a thursday person now not really a weekend weekend guy at this point isn't it? you're just like fuck it whatever happens happens on the weekend <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mate. All on all on Thursday, but you know, with with the centre back situation, if I had here, man, I'd be pulling it out right now because it's just mm. long. It is long. What is going on with this team? Um. So yeah, but like you said, I was bored into uh, into submission yesterday. So yes. boy, but there's there's talking points there that mm. you know we'll get into. I know Tobes is going to come out with some nonsense that like he started hinting at. <laughs> before the stream so I'm, I'm ready for it mate i'm ready and there you go and pots bro talk to me how you feeling just just last time we spoke to you a week ago things were falling completely down the down the shit art, and now it's back to back wins it's been a mad week for arsenal to be honest it's been it's been the perfect mate, week it's been a madness and uh that's what we needed bro it's been a madness for me i've had a mental week like busy wise and I think I'm a bit run down. I've now got a bloody cold, so I don't feel great, which is negative, which is always good, but still don't feel great. But do you know what? I've had probably a couple of hours sleep, which is a couple of hours, couple more than uh, West Ham centre backs uh, available at the moment. So uh, <laughs> do you know what? I'm uh, I'm all good. Um, I'm looking forward to speaking to see how Toby's felt the last couple of weeks. Cause it's always good to hear from my good friend Tobes. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, man, no, thanks for having me on. Do you know what, Matisse? The last few weeks has not been great for me. So I'm looking forward to this show, man, because uh, the last couple of games has been a massive surprise for the Arsenal, man. Yeah, 100%. I think hay fever's kicking our ass, but do you know what I mean? At least, <laughs> at least you've got the football to look forward to. My team, I don't know what to say. But I mean, let's start with the two teams that played each other, Chelsea versus West Ham. We were just going through some of the clips there, some of the big moments. To be honest, you could have switched this game on on the 80th minute onwards and you would have seen the whole game because the first 80 minutes was just dead. There was nothing to it. West Ham sent out pretty much their B team. No Bowen, no Antonio, no Lanzini. Three injuries at centre-back, no Rice. No Rice. Bruh. No. Down for bridge. But he had a little hug with Thomas Tuchel at the end there. <laughs> the oh, pictures are circulating again. across social media. <laughs> He's, he's taking so what he can. Excited. He's taking what I, he can. I was speaking. He? I was speaking to. I was. <laughs> I was speaking to your boys uh, on the channel there on Saturday, and I, and I, and they don't really believe that that Rice wants to come to Chelsea. But I, I believe honestly, I tell you, he really does. It's, 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 it's as clear as day. <laughs> it's as clear as day, bro. These, I'm telling these, you. these Chelsea fans, yeah. Any little thing. I remember like when like there was Rice taking pictures on the holiday with Mount, and it's like, oh look, he's with Mount. Or when he spoke to like he was speaking to John Terry. Oh look, he, he wants to come to Chelsea. Look at him talking to John Terry. It's like relax, relax. Man, he's, listen. Like I said, there's only two clubs in the league that's going to guarantee him trophies, and that's Man City and uh, Liverpool. Like Chelsea, your future's looking mysterious right now, mate. It's looking. Yeah, but he he wants to play for Chelsea. This is the problem. This is the problem that he what, wants the club to wear that, that, said that you're not good enough. The club that huh? told him you weren't good enough. That club. Hey, listen. Sometimes you get rejected by a girl, and you still go after the next the next year. It's just like it happens. You know what I mean? Just. The guy wants to prove his point clearly. You know what I mean? Getting turned down at the bar wasn't enough. He wants to come back to the bridge. It's not my fault. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you know what? He might come back and, and, and get revenge. He might come back and relegate you. He might just come. <laughs> <laughs> 
Let's talk about that penalty decision because that's where the drama really started, to be honest. Well, at first, I want to talk about the lineup here because you're an absolute disgrace, Chelsea. You rested players <laughs> to play West Ham. A team yeah. that their eyes on your open. That is an embarrassment. You put that lineup out against Arsenal, yeah? You're basically your B team messing around with positions and formations, all of that stuff, just rolling over for Arsenal and going, there you go, Arsenal. There's three points. There you go. Wrap it up nice in a little gift wrapper. To rest players to play West Ham, who we all know uh, have their eyes on Europa League. Like, what is that about, man? I think I think it's all down to the fact that Toby said in the group chat, please, Chelsea, can you win? I know I've been slandering you and your fan base and calling them virgins the whole season, but we really need this favour. You beat us three or four times this season. Please beat Arsenal. And the Chelsea were like... Nah. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, you're laugh you're laughing it up as if oh Chelsea just just did Arsenal solid, and, and you're you're deflecting for the fact that you're fucking diabolical and, <laughs> and conceded four goals to an Arsenal side who hadn't who had scored one in their last four. But nice nice deflection tactics, bro. With Eddie Listen, up top, with Eddie Scott, up top. Yeah, with Eddie up top. Nice deflection that's, tactics. Yeah. How you can see like Eddie and Ketty are mad, Come guys. This, the show is not not on not on a Wednesday. I'm. A, I, it's just the way it goes. We got to speak we, about we, the recent fixtures. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just yeah, but all I'm saying is, look, we're saying Toby's in the mud, but you're you're kind of in the mud. You're mm. kind of in the mud. Come on, man. I was even I've been in the mud the whole week. Ridiculous. <laughs> even that game. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. How can he? How can he do this? You can you see what happened to me on the big six. You can see four goals to Arsenal, and you and you literally got your ass handed to you on the big six, and you're trying to put pin it out as if it's me that's in the mud. You got buried alive, bro. Teams. If your team yeah. finishes behind, in this settings, Arsenal. you got buried. You got bro, buried, bro. At the end of the day, if you finish behind Arsenal this season after everything that's gone on there with Arteta and these last that that free game yeah, run, that's, that's on you to sort out. That's got nothing, nothing to do with me. Nothing to do with me to sort out. That's on you. That's it's on you and Conte. I just, I just thinking like the way, the way that you looked at us and you're, you were threatened by us, that you had to rest players <laughs> to face us, man. <laughs> like, and we put out a B team and you put out your best team. That's it. And 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 you still kind of had to get a helping hand to win that game. Like, I'm, let's go. <laughs> you want to talk about the penalty decision, right? Penalty or not, right? Whatever. You got the penalty. The red card. I'm sorry. That's a discredit. The game was obviously boring leading up to it. We put, we had like, obviously, we, we changed our foot formation to play five at the back. We had um, Dawson, who's our only senior centre back. And then we had Creswell and Ben Johnson, yeah, two full backs alongside him. No Declan Rice. You know, all our heavy hitters rested. And Moyes obviously had a game plan plan to mm. go there, not lose, maybe bring on the heavy hitters later on in the game, try and snatch it. Um, which seemed like it could have worked, but I think it would have ended in a draw. But that decision, the it was a, it was soft. You definitely see him impeding Lukaku, so I can't argue too much about the penalty. But he, Lukaku was uh, Dawson was not the last man. Creswell was. So why to for, you, for him to give a red card? You look at Lukaku; he was never convincingly going to get a, a, a proper shot off. Right? He was never scoring. He's leaning back anyway. And he feels that contact and he goes down. And for them to send him off for that, VAR to overrule and say, no, nah, that's the red. It's just bullshit. It's the constant circus of why we don't like VAR. Now they've suspended our only senior centre-back. <clears throat> now, for um, I think he misses one game, which is the Arsenal game, which, you know, as if, as if bloody Chelsea needed to do Arsenal any more favours than to... Uh, Get our only centre back sent off. You know, hey, listen, what's going uh, on? Some when Toby here. Toby mentioned it before. I just think it was a stupid decision from Dawson. He, there was it no was. need to pull him back because is... Lukaku was 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 running in on goal. The goalkeeper Fabianski was closing him down. I don't think he was going to get there. And even if he did get there, the, the the angles were were almost non-existent because Fabianski had basically covered everything off. And there was a covering defender as well. So I just don't understand why Dawson even started to pull him back in the first place. Knowing, let's remember, Dawson knows he's the only fit centre back. He's the only fit centre back. He knows this, and yet he's he's doing that. For me, that's just idiot. That's just idiocy. He's a plonker. He's he's he's, he's an absolute plonker and and typical typical lawless. Yeah, like. 
Um, he loves doing this. He loves he loves doing this nonsense where West Ham take no accountability for for their performances whoa, or their decisions. Whoa, whoa. I ain't finished. I ain't finished. I, he, on, loves, he, he loves he loves he loves doing this nonsense where he plays this woe is me act, bro. Craig Dawson's a fucking buffoon for what he did to Lukaku. Yeah, he's saying, oh, um, oh, um, Creswell was the last man. So what? You're pulling back Lukaku and. From the referee's perspective, you're denying him a clear goal scoring opportunity because whether we like it, whether Fabianski makes himself big, yeah, he's got a genuine opportunity to place his spot, pick his spot at goal. If you don't do that, yeah, Fabianski might save it. Yeah, but you've done it. And no. you, and then you're complaining and then you're complaining that you get a red card. Why are you complaining? Why are you no. complaining? It's so not red. I remember in, in the FA Cup, I remember a couple of years back when you lot when Chelsea had Man United. Phil Jones, um, I think it was the Hazard. He must have hacked Hazard in the box, yeah? And it was like, oh, um, they gave a penalty, but they were like, oh, why isn't it a red card? And I think they changed the rule. They changed the double jeopardy rule. So, like, if you're actually making a genuine attempt for the ball and a player is bearing down on goal and you stop a goal-scoring opportunity, then it's only a yellow card and a penalty. Did you see a, did you see a fair attempt to play for the ball from Craig Dawson? No, you I didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Yeah, right. No, no, no exactly. look, at, look at him smiling. Look at him. <laughs> Let me say you this. Fair, you didn't see a fair. You didn't see a fair, a fair, a fair challenge to actually play for the ball because he wasn't even going for the ball. He just pulling Lukaku back. I don't and, think he. It wasn't and, a pull pull though. And second of all, one, he didn't play for the ball, and two, he stopped Lukaku from getting a genuine goal scoring chance off. So it's a red card. What are you complaining no, about? Like, it's, I'm what sorry. are you complaining about? I'm sorry, that's not Generally, right. what, what are you complaining about? Tell right, me. Let me tell you about it, because people feel like, okay, he did not grab his shirt, right? He didn't grab him by the... He didn't know, when you were talking about Paul, this is very misleading. I wish we could get a picture up of the actual moment of the contact. To me, me and like I said, I'm, I'm not making... I said, cool, penalty, fine. He impedes him, but... To me, what that looked like to me is that Dawson was trying to, you know, when players, you know, like there's a player in front of you, and you're trying to get your arm in front of them to get in front of the player, right? So you're trying to muscle your, yourself in front of um, the attacker. That, see, that to me, the kind of contact, that's what it looked like he was trying to do. He was trying to sort of get himself in front of him. But, you know, what I mean, he, he kind of pulls his shoulder, his arm back. Lukaku feels it and he goes down. And let's be honest, if he doesn't go down, is it? Are they giving a, a red card? No, he goes down and they go, oh, you know, it's at Stamford Bridge. Let's give him a red card. Like, why? What's wrong with a yellow card and a penalty? He's not made a cynical foul or anything like that. Try wiped him out. No dangerous play. Like he's not in danger. Like like we said, Fabianski's closing him down. Creswell's covering it. The guy was never ever scoring. You have to take these things in consideration. Like. Well, so you you got to sort the the highlight there. What do what do you make of it? I guess judging jury. Yeah, I <laughs> I, I I kind of am with Tobes to be fair because I feel like no matter how you look at it, I don't understand what the hell the guy's doing. So, I think the rule states what Toby's made. What what Toby says there is absolutely spot on about the fact that do you actually genuinely go for that ball, and it's late and it's a red card. I just think the guy's just been a, a rush to the head, and it's a red card. So, I think fair play and listen. West Ham's performance, from what I'm being told, wasn't grand either. So take away that, it, it you know, Lawless needs to look at it a little bit like that. And I think personally, West Ham should just be concentrating on Europe anyway, man. Do you know what I mean? Dawson's not going to miss the European game, is he? So he's going to come out against Arsenal. It's all good as far as I'm yeah, concerned. Yeah, the same man. way. Yeah, yeah. You're just rubbing your hands. <laughs> <laughs> bro, but do you know what? Do you know what? Um, do you know what, bro? You see with, with the way your defence was, I know you had all the centre-backs missing, but it actually suited you to have the back three with the two full-backs on either side because we didn't have really a, a target man, so to speak. Havertz was kind of pulling to the left, pulling to the right. Werner was trying to pull you guys to the left, to the right. And those type of forwards, they're all about movement and they're all about pulling centre-backs out of position and bringing them into wide areas. Your, your full-backs, Ben Johnson and Cresswell, they were like, cool, drag us out to the full-back positions. We don't fucking care. This is where we love it. This is where we want to be. So Johnson the only time good. we tried to get a few crosses in, you know, Dawson was in the middle to head them away. And then Lukaku came on. If I think, and I've, I, I, I've, I very rarely ever want really Lukaku to step foot on the pitch. But actually, against the way your back three was set up, Lukaku coming on earlier might have actually, I mean, he came on in the end, so it's a great sub. But 
him, him coming on earlier might have helped us even more because we needed that physical presence to to bully your defense because you didn't have your your usual Diops and Zoomers and Abonas, the, the you know the, the stronger, more physical guys in in defense. So yeah, I, I think I think your the way your defense was set up not only does it suit. Um, Chelsea, the way we try and attack at home, especially when if you sit off, I think it suits Arsenal. I know obviously you need a centre back at some point to marshal things, but if you do overturn the red card and you have Dawson, I think having Cresswell and and Ben Johnson and Kufau and Masuaku, all these guys just kind of like tracking the runners. I, I don't think it's the worst. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. Masuaku, this is the problem. The guy, and we see him get done a few times. He he can't defend defensively yeah. he's so weak and going forward is where his strengths are and this is what i'm saying i see what dan's saying about obviously look Moyes made, made that statement very clear with the starting lineup we, we we're putting all our eggs into the europa league basket now problem i have is is yes dawson doesn't miss the europa league game but these sort of things can have a just a knock-on effect now when you start to do things in the league you know where he's still going to be playing now Johnson and Creswell out of position. Like I said, it works in that game, but sometimes they they could get themselves in situations now where and do making rash decisions that even experienced centre back won't do. You see Dawson as an experienced centre back who made a stupid decision. Now a lot of the times Creswell he is good for a red card. You know what I mean? And then it puts and then it just puts strains on. Obviously it stays in the league, but what I'm saying is physically and and it just puts a strain on the players. And this is an issue for me. Is the the the, the squad man? It's we're just we're getting down to the bare bones. Who have you got there now, Lawless? Like, who can you play there? Can, like, can Suchet come in and do a job? Have you got someone from the youngsters? Have you got a reserve that can well, this is step the, the, forward? This is what I don't get. This is what I don't understand. Why Moyes doesn't play the youngsters? He said he what he likes a small squad because it gives him the opportunity to bring through youngsters. He wants to do Red Bull model, this, that, and the other. But they've barely played this season. Like we've barely seen them. So I look, and you see it. He he would rather play two uh, fullbacks in that position than he would rather play a youngster alongside Dawson. Um, so is we that because they're not coming a... through, though? Is that because they're not coming through? Is there anyone you've got? We've got we've got like the Elise, Baptiste, two very promising youngsters. Our, our I think our um, our under twenty threes are going for the league title. In the uh, in the under twenty three division, they're like flying. We've Surely that's the players. answer, man. Surely that's the answer. Yeah, now. like I, listen, Yarmolenko, he's done some good things from the bench, but he shouldn't be starting. Like, if we're gonna start start someone, he, like he's going at the end of the season. We could have started a youngster. We got Oko Flex, who's banging in goals for the under twenty threes. Why not start him? We bought Vlasic for twenty five mil. Doesn't get on the pitch. Like, yeah. wow, twenty five mil you paid for him. Jesus Is that Christ. a lot? Wow. Yeah. Wow, yeah, twenty five mil, and he barely plays. Like, and and you and you got to ask yourself, like, yes, Yarmolenko has had some some big clutch moments for us this season, but he should not be starting games. He was, he was just anonymous that game, really, apart from a few, a couple of moments. You love the arm for when he when he bagged to it too. Yarmolenko's back. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa! Yeah. What what is these made up quotes? Where's yeah. these? Where's these made up back. quotes? Yeah. I remember Gary Kane was back, but where yeah. was his clutch moment? Eh? Yeah. Where was his yeah, clutch moment? back two and two. Oh, West Ham. Yeah. Come on, man. This is just <laughs> some salty, salty Spurs biasness. I've always said, boom, super sub. He's. I never said he's back. I never said he's back. Don't even. Right. I don't even twist my May word. As well May as well have. May as well have. What? Because I celebrated some some big goals <laughs> like in Europe that you ain't doing Bro. right now. Don't don't, don't 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 get Larry with me, mate. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you have to do is just hold your hands up and go. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Listen, Moyes is is going for that trophy, mate. He's resting players, yeah, for that trophy. So you best hope we not we don't win that, mate, because you're mm. like I said, we'll be finished, mm. and we're edging <laughs> closer and closer. So, boy, you, you can see the nerves in Toby's face because he knows if this happens, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. It a wrap. Frankfurt, will the, Frankfurt will get the job done, and if they don't do it, like, <laughs> like, like, like people, if they don't do it, like people, simple. And if Leipzig don't, then, then if Leipzig don't, then I'm mudded. Yeah, simple. Yeah. But I've got two more bites of the cherry, and I'm gonna bite. I'm gonna bite hard. Mm. It was like. You're not, you're not getting past Sevilla. You're not going to win because you're not getting past Sevilla. You're not knocking out Sevilla. Sevilla go down. You're not beating Leon. 
Leon get knocked out. Frankfurt will beat you. We beat Frankfurt. Oh, Rangers or Leipzig will beat you. We win that. It's like, oh, and then, boy, I, I just can't wait to see what he's going to say and how, if we win that, how he's going to try and downplay it and all of that stuff because it's going to be beautiful. But like I said, Tobes, I'm taking him on tour of every podcast just so I can just... <laughs> <laughs> just destroy what every platform, everyone's platform. So get your if we win, get your bookings in, get in touch with me and Tobes. And listen, Tobes, you need to be there, mate. To he knows it. he can't play it down though. Tobes, to be fair to Tobes, he he knows he can't play it down, but he's he's hanging on to the fact <laughs> he's hanging on to the fact these two guys do it. Listen, I don't want West Ham to win it, but I did say that I felt they had a chance in this competition. But if he was to put me on the line, you, I think Frankfurt right. might Yeah, listen, I said you'd had a chance. I still don't think you will win it though, Dan. But listen, you've got a chance. Because you're in the uh, competition. Yeah, so. Exactly. so so listen, you see that from Dan Potts, yeah. First he said Frankfurt, he thinks Frankfurt are gonna win it, but then he has to he has to get back on the fence and then support West Ham. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> listen, oh, I can, listen, I, can be, said, I can be said I think they can do it, so there we go, Matisse. That this is the thing. Tobes can't yeah, say he's that. A, he's a West Ham stick rider though, isn't he? No, oh, I just want to see look. you pissed. That's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> That's all it is. I just want to see you oh, pissed after you yeah, all season. You know what? Yeah, I get. I always get people in my watch longs in my comments. Yeah, going talking about Tobes. Oh, you've got a like. Yeah, we're gonna win this. We can't. Can't wait to see Tobes cry. Everything like it is. Everyone wants to see Tobes in the mud, and it yeah, is just yeah, beautiful. Whatever. Obviously, Dan don't want us to win it because obviously Arsenal haven't won a European trophy. So then it's kind of. It gives a, it gives us a little sink over them. Do you know what I mean? Even though they've won obviously a lot of trophies and that, but still, it's yeah. always nice to have a little something we can we can throw at these at these teams. Yeah. You know, Speaking so. of Arsenal, big, 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 big Kahuna's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you that week that you just had. It's. I, I'm not gonna lie. I expect you to beat Man United. My prediction was nothing but salt on the big six. But Chelsea, fair play, fair bloody really play. fair play. With Fair that play. lineup, really? Nah, nah, even with the lineup, I still expect uh, the lineup was atrocious. Let's not get it wrong. The, the 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 lineup, and I said it at the time. I tried to say it before Big Steve interrupted and did a mazzolini on me, but <laughs> the lineup was mad, and the lineup was was lacking so much balance, and it made no sense. There was no chemistries or relationships on the pitch. It was nuts. It was such a, such a crazy, ridiculous lineup from Tuchel. But listen, even still, Arsenal had a couple of players out. No party. No uh, Tommy Asu, no Tierney, no um, no Lacazette, of course, up top. So they still had to come and do the business and they, they got the job done. And then Man United, even Jack is getting involved in scoring screamers now. So, but even still, Potts, it's not done yet. So how are you feeling? How are you feeling? It's not done yet. Still got to go to White Yeah, Hart. listen, this season is very, very simple for me with Arsenal Football Club. We'll lose a couple, go on a nice little run. Lose a couple, go on a nice little run. Lose a couple, go on a nice little run, and now we've lost a couple, and we're going on a nice little run again. And do you know what? I didn't expect anything from Chelsea United. I remember coming on here on other podcasts saying I actually thought we'd take zero points. I thought Manchester United would probably come out and take something. Few people said to me, "No chance, man. Have you seen how bad United were?" And maybe I overestimated how bad they were. My God, absolute trash. They are. I mean. They're finished at the moment. It's like RIP to their football club. They are that bad, top to bottom. As for Chelsea, I agree with you, Matisse. I agree with the guys that I thought the decision for the team selection was a madness. If I'm honest with you, I wasn't expecting to see that performance, but also that team lineup. That left-hand side of Chelsea's was just a madness. I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Saar and Alonso... Um, to come up against the sackers of this world. So I expected us to put in a performance because obviously we needed to see intensity. And I think in both games, although we were living dangerously in both games, I thought the defending in parts was shambolic for Man United and Chelsea. You know, the, Ronaldo was unreal. What, you know what Ronaldo does. I thought the defending for that goal was ridiculous. I thought the defending at Stamford Bridge in the first half was laughable from both sides, if I'm honest. The, the, the defending from Chelsea to let Eddie come in and score two goals, I mean... Wow, it was just wow. And then to have Cesar Aspilicueta do what he did, the deflected goal to get them get you back into the, the game from Werner, it was just a bit of a madness, really. And, you know, I spoke to Lee Judges not long before it, and he just said, look, we need a madness tonight if we want to get anything from this game. And that's what we got, was a bit of a madness. Um, 
But what we've done is take six points from what I expected to get not many from. So I think when you look at how we've bounced back from three poor performances and poor losses, we have to be happy as a fan base to say that, wow, we've, we've picked up six points and put ourselves back in the driving seat thanks to Spurs dropping points. So I, of course, have a good week and I'm very, very happy. How do I see things playing out? I never thought that I'd be relying on players like Mohamed Elneny. But that guy has been ridiculously good in the last two games. This the guy's not my favourite player, along with Granit Xhaka. But both of them together have really proven why perhaps Mikel Arteta got it wrong in the previous games against Palace Brighton and Southampton by playing Lokonga there. Because as much as he's got potential, he's clearly shown that he's not ready in terms of experience. And Elneny's come in and be that cool, calm head that Thomas Partey is since he's been out. And him and Chaka have formed a partnership in the middle there that has allowed us to play well in the last couple of games and boss the midfield in both of those uh, those games. So we needed something. We needed a bit of madness. We've got it. And now everybody all of a sudden again is saying that Arsenal favourites for this top four place. It's crazy how much can change in a week of football, Matisse. Mm, it's absolutely mad, honestly, because... Listen, Man United, uh, it's not really a surprise at this point. Their their whole squad. I mean, you got Paul Scholes baiting out Jesse Lingard, saying that the dressing room is not right. You got just all sorts of madness going on. Bruno Fernandes with another anonymous performance. The penalty that he missed. Which which was worse? Because I want to I want to I want to put this question to people. Which first of all, which was worse, Bruno's penalty or Jorginho's penalty? And then both, both do you horrible. guys do you guys feel both like horrible. strikers? Strikers should take penalties. Is that are you of the, the mindset no. that strikers should be on penalties? I think you need a clear penalty taker, like someone yeah. who is like we have Mark Noble has always been our penalty taker, yeah, because he you know he's the best one at it and he you know he hardly ever misses. And <coughs> you need a clear defined penalty taker, like this guy is to in charge. Why Ronaldo don't take that penalty, I have no idea because he is without a doubt the best penalty taker they have. I know Bruno is experienced with it, he's done a lot. But yeah, I do think that I feel like the Chelsea one's slightly worse, even though he got it on target. At, like Bruno thought he could slot it in the in the corner, mm. you know, and slide it in, and he just hits the woodwork. But he don't you think though, Lawless? No, like, no, no, but when you take penalties the way that those two do, I fucking if hate you it. miss, you look like a dickhead. Yeah, if you miss, yeah, you look like a dickhead. Yeah, I, I agree with Dan Potts. I just I can't stand that that penalty technique, whether it's Bruno, whether it's Jorginho, even if it was if it was Harry Kane doing it, I would say the same. I can't stand that penalty tech because I don't really think you can generate enough power with that flipping um that 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 flipping move or that hip or hop scotch or whatever you want to call no, it nothing bro. will ever beat Zaza's though man I remember we signed him off the back of that remember Zaza's little, little Zaza. yeah 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 but yeah. it's just it's just it's yeah I, I think the the penalty the penalty tech is is awful and it needs binning in my opinion and I think for the second point, um, with Man United, like, I get that Bruno was their designated penalty taker, which is why he's taking the penalties. That part I get. But why he is your designated pay, uh, penalty taker when you have Ronaldo is is, is baffling but Ronaldo has taken penalties for them this season, I'm sure. Because I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure he... Yeah, he has taken penalties for them. Ronaldo. He has. Oh, he definitely has. Do you take, do you take one of the three picks people have been take, saying that he should maybe come off the Is break. it when Bruno's not on the pitch, though, that he's taking? Yeah, this is what I'm saying. Free, like, Monday night. There, was, there, was, there was one where, like, they had a little bit of, I think they had a little bit of a, not an argument, but there was a little bit of, you know, argy-bargy about, like, Ronaldo wanting to take, and I think... Yeah, he has, he has taken a penalty. He has taken a penalty, but I think maybe that's when he's on a hat-trick or something, but... Uh, yeah, but Bruno, me... Like, wasn't he on a hat trick then? Or no, he was on a. He would have got. He would have been. Obviously, he'd got his goal, hadn't he? Yeah, he got my. Goal my thing is this though. I just think. I I just think with Bruno Fernandez. Yeah, you've got you've got a relatively good penalty record against um, penalty record for Man United, but he he's not better. He's not better penalty taker than Ronaldo. So why he's number one choice for penalty? For penalties yeah. to be taken is is yeah, I'm with you. And, and having a shocking game game as well when Ronaldo obviously was yeah. was causing problems. He was clinical. Like, yeah. We can't forget Man United should have had another penalty for that handball. Yeah. Only Langer or the handball. How is VAR no, not handball, that yeah. he, he goes down and he literally like swats the ball 
out of the area with, with his hand as he goes back. How is that not given? Oh, I agree. I agree. I think VAR, again, like I was at the game and, you know, when the goal went in and then it was disallowed and then they give a penalty, I'm thinking, what? The, I hate this VAR, man. You can't celebrate goals anymore. It's it takes so it away. It's just so bad. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, right. We're not actually we're... getting decisions right all the time as well. I mean, yeah, like, I, I agree with you, Lawless. That was a penalty for me. And when I see it live, I was like, oh, what's he doing there? Like, that's how have we got away with that one? So that was a madness. That's, that's what I mean. We were living dangerously. It wasn't convincing because obviously Bruno Fernandes puts that in. It's a different story. The penalty decision you've just brought up. So, you know, and, and Nuno Tavares, by the way, like, I, could, I can't work this guy out. Like, he can't defend, but he does great stuff going forward. Then he has shocking, shocking parts of the game where he's losing out to people, where he obviously makes the handball to give the penalty away. It's like this guy was just out having a madness. But I have to talk about Man United for a second and look at the mm. opposition and think, Bruno Fernandes, what's happened to him? Like, what has happened to him? Because no matter what people are saying, he was taking and driving Man United forward not that long ago. With Being exposed. Yeah, with yeah, chances he's created. Been, he's, been exposed. he's been exposed. I'm telling you. <laughs> you know what it is? You know what it is, though, Dan? I think... With Bruno Fernandes, even in his best period to Man United, he doesn't actually play well over the ninety minutes. Like exactly. he's Bruno Fernandes has moments always, like yeah, he's yeah. always been exactly he's always been a moments player. And take nothing away from Bruno, I don't think he's as bad as what he's showing now. I don't, but no. what I do believe Agreed. is that he's he's someone who makes a lot of mistakes in a football pitch yeah. and it gets covered up with his with his goals and assists. And the only difference now is the goals and assists aren't coming, which is why you're seeing the performance, which is why you're seeing the performances as bad as they are. But when you actually deeper, even with the goals and assists, a lot of these performances are not unsurprising for Bruno Fernandes. Like he's been, he's had many games like this before, even when yeah. he's scored or assisted for United. But I do agree. Even by his inconsistent, like in-game standards, like this is genuinely abhorrent now. Like it's it's terrible. It's mm. absolutely he's, terrible. He's a he's a high volume player um, who needs a lot of attempts to get things right. Which is which yeah. is in that part of the pitch, it's understandable because obviously you're trying, you're taking risks. But he's just not a great. Um, he's not a great passer of the ball. He's not a he's not a midfielder, really, in my opinion. A midfielder should be able to not have any GA and still impact the game, whether that's control it, dictate the tempo, set the pace, get your team back into it by stringing some passes together. From a leadership standpoint, that's what they should be able to do. I've seen the top midfielders do it. He's not that guy. <coughs> he's the guy that you want playing just off the striker, ghosting him behind, getting the goals, taking the penalties. And and this is this is the kind of player he is. And when he's not scoring or assisting, people actually start to look at his performance more and they're like, what's going on? Whereas before, he would drop a six out of 10 performance, but he would pop up with a goal and then mm. celebrations and everybody like, oh, Bruno, Bruno. But he didn't have a great performance, you know? So I don't, I don't think as well, Matisse, there's much telepathy between him and Ronaldo, like people might think, just because of the same no. the nationality thing. I don't think they can play together. Like when I'm looking at Ronaldo in that forward role, Bruno in that, 10 or attacking 8, whatever you want to call it. For me, it doesn't really work. And I, I just look at Man United and just think they're a very average team. Like, a lot of people give them a lot That's of credit because they have... Yeah, because well, yeah, they have match winners. People were like, they've got fourth sewn up. They'll definitely have a chance of a title. Like, start of the season, I was like, I don't see this. I do not see this on the, on paper. I don't think... I don't look at that, that 11 and go, God, there's seven or eight of those players that I would love in this Arsenal side. They just don't have that. So I think that people were overlooking how bad some of their players are. Like Fred and McTominay, that's the worst centre midfield that I've seen in I Man United in my era. You know, I'm mm. used to Keane, Scholes, Carrick, like sort of players like that. This, this is just a poor side. I'm not going to lie. This do, do is just a poor it, side. Do you know what it is though? I think like people obviously looked at the team last season. They got second place. They then add Ronaldo, Sancho, Varane. And you think, wow, okay, there's three very big improvements of players. Sancho obviously hasn't kicked on till late, and Varane. It's very interesting, actually. I thought Varane was was poor, but because Maguire, Maguire was dropped, right, yeah. and their defense is still a clown show, yeah. and no one's like because they can't scapegoat Maguire. I didn't hear nothing on Varane. Um, the bad, it's all about Bruno now because Bruno's the other scapegoat. But they wanted to. It's that it's the thing about Man United fans. Obviously, Harry Maguire has been shocking. For Man, for Man United, but still, it just shows to you the problems run deeper than Maguire. Like their whole team, apart from Ronaldo, maybe Sancho, you've got to give him some time. 
and De Gea. Uh, just shit. And they're, they're going to have problems next season, man. I, I think people think Ten Hag is, is just going to come in and click his fingers and that's it. But It's going to take time, need, man. They need a major, they need like a major upheaval, man. Like, uh, they need a major upheaval because a lot of these players that even I thought like were really like they could do a job for United, they're just, they're just not as good as, as we thought. Yeah, Varane, I like Varane, but he's not, he's not, not a leader, had, is he? He's not had the impact that that um, we thought he'd have, and with the injury problems as well, he's gonna be, he's what twenty nine years old. Like um, he, this may be the best. It, actually, let me not say that because Varane, I like Varane, but what I'm saying is in the midfield. When I look at the midfield now with Paul Pog, when once Paul Pog leaves on the free transfer, look at the midfield. Paul Pog was leaving on the free transfer. Matic is gonna leave as well. So then you have Lingard, Fred. I know he's not a star, Lingard right? leaving as well. So you have Fred. Fred and McTominay as your as 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 your midfield base, it's not good enough. So, whether they like it or not, they've got so many players out of contract. It, it might be a blessing in disguise for them because they got so many players out of contract. They got a, a few wantaways as well. This is an opportunity when Ten Hag is coming in to actually try and wipe the slate as clean yeah, as but possible. Those wantaways, like say the ones that they want, they need to sell. Who's buying them? Who's buying a Luke Shaw? Who's buying a Maguire? Mm-hmm. Who's buying a, Rash- a Rashford? Because the, well, look at the wages they're on. I think they should keep that. Rashford, though. The fans want to sell him, but I think they should keep Rashford. I think Martial is the one where you're like, wow, 250 well, he... bags a week, 26 yeah. years old, injury prone. Who's going to yeah. take the gamble? Yes, uh, Sevilla don't want to sign him on a permit. They're already wanting to give him back. Yeah, so like most of these players that they, they need to get rid of that are on contract, who's going to sign them? And, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to hear. Any more about Rice to Man United? I'm sorry, it's <laughs> ridiculous. It's embarrassing that any journalist that like, seriously suggests that that's f- f- plausible. Because one, yeah, obviously, look, they've got to replace a lot of players. How are they spending over 100 mil on Rice and then signing what they need to? Two, why would Rice go there? Like really and truly, who's going to Man United just because they used to be good in the Fergie years anymore? You have to look at it as a player and go, what is my potential to win trophies with this football club and mm. I, still I have the ball, though. they still they still have a pool it's not they have a, yeah it's not the same is it enough for you to go all right let me make this decision let me make this leap now leave the club i'm at that i'm the captain that i'm playing well and i'm gonna go there because if he makes that move he could just end up like wamba saka or and, Paul Pogba. Pogba. he could end up like Paul Pogba. like Pogba. Mm. yeah it's, it's I, you get trapped in this club that you're not going to win, you're miserable because of the way the club is. It's toxic. When he the history and reputation out. ain't enough now. Mm. Yeah, I'm with you, man. The way they are, I, I, I can't see. They're see a mess. It. They're a mess. I, I do think. I do think, and you'll probably see this as me taking the piss. I'm actually not. Um, I think West Ham to Man United is obviously a step up when you look at the money, the the resources, the name, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But when you look at the teams that have been linked with Declan Rice, I, I, Chelsea have been linked throughout. Um, for the last like year and a half or so, and then even now we're seeing reports that Man City are looking at him as well. You're just thinking to yourself, and Declan Rice doesn't want to sign a new deal, so you're just thinking to yourself like he knows that he can get to he can get at a club who who have the capacity to challenge like right now. So why he would then throw that away to go to Man United, who you can see are probably at least at the very least at least another two to three years away from from even sniffing. Um, like genuine competition for Liverpool and Man City. Yeah, I don't think you'll go. I think Rice will stay, man. I will De- definitely this summer, anyway. Yeah, I think you'll stay this summer. Like I said, the Chelsea thing. If I'm him, I look at Chelsea. We don't know what Chelsea are going to look like post the Bramble. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. Like they could really f- fall back, go backwards, and, and fall down the table. Um, but they might not. They might go and you know business as usual or be stronger. But you have to see, like I said, you can't just make these leaps. The only places, two places you can go, like I said. And guarantee trophies is Man City and Liverpool, or go abroad. Uh, you know, there's been links with Real Madrid and things like that. But yeah, Moyes is comfortable. Look, we got he's got like what three and a half years left, really. Yeah, we're 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 in a, we're in a driving seat. He ain't putting no three and a half years. Do you not feel like at some yeah. point? Oh shit! I, 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 I thought it was going to be two years this summer. No, we got an option. We've got the option to 
extend okay. for another year. Okay. Uh, um, you so so you guys obviously if you win the Europa League, I think he stays because then you're in Champions League. I definitely yeah. think he, he does at least one more year. He there. Good time one, yeah. If we win Europa League and then we have, a, I think he wants to see what we're gonna do, what ambition they're gonna show in the transfer window as well. Mm. Like I think if we win that Europa League, we have a banging window. I think he'll be. I think he'll sign because even if you sign, like if he signs, he sees where it goes. You know. He could. He doesn't mean he's locked in. He's still young. He could sign. You say he doesn't mean he's locked in, but I've seen it with. Mel- I've seen it with Wilfred Zaha. I've seen it with uh, so many players. And you sign that long-term contract. Mm. I, I just think that he's got. There's such a like. I think he's a future England captain. I think he's got such potential that I think that there'll always be um, clubs that wanting to come in for him. And I think if we got a good offer, our club and the type of club that they don't really turn down. Um, offers like that, like we had Pie it, like we 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 buckled at like the first bid because oh he didn't he wanted to go. As soon as Marseille come in with like a twenty five million pound bid, we sold him. Like we sold Pie it for twenty five million pounds. So I I think that they'll sell him. And Moyes, like he said, he sold Rooney and it didn't really affect um having negative effects. How much how much is he going to cost? Do you reckon? The price oh, right. is going up. Yeah, it's going up. But I think like like realistically. They've said 150 mil, but I think like obviously you put that out there. But I think realistically they'd take if someone put a bid in for 100 to maybe like ones with like they'd take it, which is kind of we don't want to sell, which is why we're slapping on these high price tags, right? 150 mil that means like you know if so if someone does want to take him off us, that's how much it's going to cost. But we don't want to sell. So if we do decide we want to sell, then that price tag goes down. If we go shit, no, we do need the money, then our leverage goes down. Before before we move to Tottenham, last thing on Rice, um, do you feel like at any point he's going to get unsettled with the fact if you don't win the Europa League and you don't sell him and and you and you put his price tag at a stupid like stupid level that he's not worth, do you feel like he's going to get unsettled and be like, all right, come on guys, I've been loyal to you, I've been here now, captain, and I've done my thing, but I want to move, especially if a bid comes in. Do you feel like there's any room because he could look at it like. Uh, you guys are taking my loyalty for for you're taking my kindness for weakness now. Maybe you're taking my loyalty for granted. You're, you, you're getting a good strong offer here potentially, but you want more, or you or you're going to keep waiting for my contract to run down when it's like three and a half years left. Do you do you see any chance where he's like gets a bit unsettled if an official bid comes in? Say an official bid comes in from Chelsea and Man City in the summer, and it's mm. a proper bid. It's a it's a proper it respect. So what are you saying? Bid. Like what eighty mil or so? Yeah, eighty mil upwards. And 80 mil of add-ons because ain't nobody shelling out 120 mil up front in, in this era. But I think if we think? have like a poor transfer window and we don't go and get in like a top striker and bring start spending money, bringing players we lead, he's going to look at it and go, well, you know what I mean? Why are you trying to keep me? You clearly don't have the ambition that I have for this club. So if you don't have that ambition, you might as well sell me because what's the point in just keeping me and not adding and building, you know, other quality players? I think I think if he looks at it and goes, you know what, we had a good season, we got to semi final or final, we didn't win it, um, you know, and we we're showing every intent to have that sort of season again this season and improve. I, th- I don't think he's he's unsettled. But I think if he looks at it and go, well, you know what I mean? Like, you're just happy that you got a, a bit of a European run and now, what, back to mid-table? Like, then he'll be unsettled. But he's still young. That's what I'm saying. He's not like Kane, where Kane's like, what, 29 or 28 or something. And Kane's looking and goes, shit, if I don't leave now, like, if I actually see out my contract, like, I ain't yet. I'm never going to get an opportunity to win a trophy in my life. Like, Kane's literally, that's why I think he sort of panicked. But I don't think Rice needs to panic right now. He's If he, he sees out his contract, he's going to be, what, 26? So, yeah. So you'll be happy to lose him on a free. No, nah, but when I, but you got to look at it like this, right? You look at yes, we will if we if he sees that his contract, we'll lose him for free. But then, what do we gain by having him for three extra seasons? Because he's a quality player. So, you know, in a way, like how much would you spend to sign someone like would we spend to sign someone like Rice on a three year deal? Um. So yeah, man, I just look at it that way. Like if we get it, it, it benefits us. If we if we sold him now, man, that's a hard player to replace. Very hard player in the dressing room and on the pitch. 
So, boy, like I said, it's got to be good money. I don't think you will replace him. I think that it's you've got to do you've got to be clever with this man. You can't afford to let him walk out the door for nothing, even if it means you keep him for three years. Because realistically, as much as he'd be great for you, I think you need to look at the future of West Ham. And mm. I don't think the future of West Ham has Declan Rice in it. Like I'm talking long term future. I think for the next couple of years, I think Declan Rice is there. I think the guy's too good. And listen, I have a lot of respect for West Ham in terms of what they've done in the last few seasons. But this guy should be playing at top level like Champions League every year. He's that good. I think this this kid is wicked. Like ridiculously good for his age. So we have to see what happens. But in the next couple of years I think West Ham need to need to deal with this. I don't think they can do deal I don't think they can get into a situation what Tottenham have got with Harry Kane, where it's clear that he wants to leave and, you know, Tottenham are just trying to clutch, clutch onto him and chain him to a radiator. He doesn't want to be there. And, do you know what I mean? Like, Declan Rice, let's be honest, like, in a couple of years' time, he's he's going to be, right, Where where is my future lying? Because with West Ham, we've done great. You know, if you get into the Europa League, um, sorry, into the Champions League through the Europa League, he might look and think what, what we can do there to push on. But I think this guy will be playing at top, top-level elite football and... Uh, you know, no disrespect to West Ham, but I think the guy could be at Man City level. I really do. I think he's that good. Mm, yeah, I think so too. Um, so the only team we haven't touched upon um, before we get to one segment that I haven't told you guys about, which is going to be pretty funny, but Tottenham. Toby, I didn't get to watch your game. I don't know why you, man, have decided to bottle this this opportunity, but please, what's going on? Brentford, it's an opportunity, surely. I mean, Brentford are basically safe, almost. What happened, man? Talk to us. Let us be your therapy. <laughs> yeah, just a really flat performance again. Um, I think Brentford, they played... They, didn't need, they played... It's weird because I don't want to come off sounding salty. Brentford were better than Spurs. Let me just say that. Same way with Brighton. I think both these sides were better than Spurs. But again, I don't really think they played particularly great. I think they were all right. Um they hurt us a lot on the set pieces. That was that was the thing for them. Like they should have won the game, to be honest. They hurt us on set pieces. I think they created like two big openings just off set pieces. And yeah, one we couldn't deal with their set pieces, which we just kept giving them over and over and over again. I think they had something like 12, 12 corners or something crazy like that. And um yeah, we just we just couldn't play through them, man. We we couldn't play like we we saw what Brighton did with Harry Kane when they put Basuma on Harry Kane. And this week we saw Brentford congest the middle areas as well. And that hampered our build-up. But at the same time, I felt like Harry Kane's performance was still poor. I felt like he could have done he could have done more than, than he did on the day. And it's not just him. I think Eric Dyer wasn't good. Um, people will laugh, but he's actually been... Uh, Fairly consistent performance for Spurs this season, despite what I actually think of him. But he was poor. The the wing backs, goodness, goodness gracious, the wing backs are fucking atrocious, man. Like Brian Sessegnon, uh, our fans are pining for this guy to come back into the team because Regulon wasn't playing well. Comes back into the team and he looks he, he looks instantly worse than Regulon and looks like the player that that we've pretty much seen since he's since he's joined Spurs, which is a not very good one anyway. He's 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 pants. He was and so Chicken. highly rated, like before he signed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fulham boy. Everyone yeah, like, Chicken. so Regulon and Recession, like I was being told, like you know, Regulon's better than Kieran Tierney, like a couple of years ago. All this, like he's dropped off. Cessignon, I don't know what's happened to that. Let's, kid. Not, pre- let's, that. let's not pretend that like Kieran Tierney hasn't dropped off as well this season. Let's not pretend. Yeah, listen, In- Tierney's better than Regulon. Fine, but, you lot. Want yeah, that. he's better than Regulon. Oh. That was like, that was my yeah. point. Yeah. He's better than Regulon, but let's not pretend like Tierney's the bee's knees. He's definitely dropped off. Regulon came from a Europa League winning team, wasn't it? And... Yeah, he was. And listen, his first, his first like three, four months of the season was yeah. we thought, wow, like breath of fresh air. You've come, you've come to change our fortunes. It was similar to Hoybier. And then this guy, Regulon, he got injured for pretty much the winter period, missed like two months of the season, came back, and he's been he's been out of sorts ever since. But yeah, and then Chicken Royale is even worse. Like he's just bad. But in all, I've seen you tweet. You spent a hundred million on fullbacks. He's isn't terrible, it? man. It's, he it's, is it's terrible. terrible. But that it, Emerson it, Royale, oh he's my days, fucking, he's garbage. But um, in all honesty, I think the biggest culprit for us losing on, on Saturday or or not winning on Saturday, sorry, is Antonio Conte, man. Mm. I think he takes the biggest L for me because he he saw the same issues that 
affected us in Brighton, affect us in Brentford, and did nothing to change it. Well, he did nothing to change it until the 76th minute when he brought inexplicably brought on Davison Sanchez. You're chasing the, the game is nil nil. You're chasing the game, and he takes off Ryan Sessegnon and brings on Davison Sanchez. I, I could not <laughs> believe that substitution. Like that is it's mad, there man. on my watch long. I was actually like I, I was my jaw was on the floor because I was thinking, what the hell are you playing at? And even now I'm thinking about him in my head. I'm like, this doesn't even make sense. Davison Sanchez has barely played on the left side of a free for us um, anyway. And what is he going to add to our attacking quality? Like you've got Steven Bergwijn who scored three goals off the bench for us this season for Antonio Conte. And he doesn't even get a minute. And then he brings on that bonehead Lucas Moura who just runs into traffic, runs into brick walls if he could. He just puts his head down and runs, 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 runs without using his brain. It's just, it's poor, man. And then we're left chasing the, we're, we're left chasing the game, trying to score a goal. And towards the end, Brentford looked at the team that are more likely to score. And it's like, what, what's going on here? Like, is this a team that are genuinely trying to get into the Champions League? Does Conte actually want us to get into the Champions League? Because your substitutions, your changes does not reflect that of a man who's desperately chasing the game against Brentford. And the attitude of the players, it didn't look like they're, they're, they're a side that want Champions League football. One point out of six against Brighton and Brentford, it's not good enough. And now we've left ourselves, we've left ourselves in a, uh, in a tougher position than we were in two weeks ago, where we now have to win at least minimum. We have to win at least four out of five, four, four out of our remaining five games minimum. But you have to play Arsenal, and you said you always said if you were within three points of them or two points yeah. of them, obviously goal difference depends. Then you give yourself a chance. So then I'll give, my, then then I'll give myself a proper chance. Listen, now I'm still not gonna. It's not over yet. It's not over yet for sure. Like. It's the same thing I said about Arsenal. I remember when we when I said it in the big six, these that were taking the piss out of me. I expected Arsenal to beat Man United. These games that the this the, the last week, I didn't expect Arsenal to beat Chelsea, but I expected Arsenal to beat Man United. And I expected or I expect Arsenal, even before their run, their 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 two back to back wins. I expected Arsenal to go to 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 West Ham's ground and get a result, whether it's a draw or a win, but they're not losing that game at the very least. So for me, it swings and roundabouts. Yeah, a lot of people are speaking with certainty about an uncertain top four race. It's not over. It's the same thing I said to Dan Potts. It's not over just yet. It's not over. So I just, <laughs> I'm trying to... You re- guys have to go to Liverpool, isn't it? That's the problem. They yeah, go to, they go to West Ham. One, it? So, West Ham with no centre-backs and Frankfurt yeah. in between sandwich. Perfect, perfect time to play West Ham. Exactly. You know what, though, like, you know, Tom Can you brings apologize up a good point. To me? No, I just want an apology. No, go on, Tom, because when we did the Man United <laughs> debate, right, I said, okay, I think Spurs could get it. However, the thing that gives me hope is that they are the biggest bottle jobs going, right? And you were so offended by that, so outraged, but it's kind of playing out, right? You have it in your hands. You've you've got good players, good manager, but the Spursiness is coming out. So I was right. (laughs) Like you, no, but, 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 but no, my I, I don't have any I don't have an issue with anyone calling Spurs bottle jobs because we have bottled a lot of stuff. I have an a, I have an issue with with a lack of self awareness from you. Oh, so, like, you can, <laughs> so, so you can, you can don't, don't get it twisted. You can yeah. like I, like I take the, I take the piss out of Matisse and Chelsea all the time. I rip them, but I know that Spurs are dead. You actually think West Ham are the bee's knees, and you talk to me as if as if as if you're on a superior. If, if they win the Europa League, would they not be Blackboard superior to you though? Yeah, huh? exactly. If they win the Europa League, they could actually end up being superior. I'm not gonna lie. Say say that with chest. If if they win the Europa League, West Ham will be superior. Okay, cool. All right, cool. But yeah. it's fine. Whatever you're listen, Spurs, Spurs are doing Spurs annoyingly are doing the opposite of what we needed to do. And you're looking at it now thinking, rah, like they were in such a good position and they've thrown it away. The same way people talk about Arsenal a couple of weeks back. The same is applicable to, to Spurs. So we now need to do everything we can to to try and get top four and hope that the other teams do, do a job for us. We had it in our hands and we fumbled it. We fumbled it. There's no other excuse for it. We fumbled it. Conte needs to take blame. The players need to take blame. It's not good enough. Do you know what? I, I agree with what Tobes is saying, actually. A lot of what he's saying in terms of Conte, because, listen, take nothing away from it. He's an elite elite manager, yeah? He's in the elite bracket for me. Everywhere he's gone, he's been successful. But 
I know there's only so much you can do with some of the trash that Tottenham have got, but surely as an elite manager, you get the best out of what you've got and you work with what you've got. And they've got five players there, Spurs now, which I think are decent. Romero, Kulusevski, Ben Sanko, Kane and Son, right? So <coughs> you've got them available to you. Yes, you've got some horrendous players around you, but I'm glad that Tobes is questioning the manager there because a lot of the time it's always the players when you lose, it's always the players aren't good enough. We already know the players aren't good enough. Like that's, 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 that's not, Let's have it right. The Tottenham players haven't been good enough for the whole season. So when you look at the, you know, the Spurs fans, and I'm not putting Tobes in this bracket to be fair to him, laughing at Arsenal for losing to Brighton at home. Like They're laughing hard and then all of a sudden it happens to them. They were laughing hard at the start of the season when we got bullied and beaten up by Brentford with our reserves and then all of a sudden they've gone there and found it difficult. So, you know, sometimes you have to look at, at things in perspective and think actually maybe Brighton and Brentford are the teams that you can lose to. It's the Premier League. But when you look at how they've lost that game and actually in the last couple of games against Brighton and Brentford, I think Conte does need to take a little bit of, of the blame for that. And I think Tobes is right there because as much as Kane and Son have got to Spurs out of trouble, sometimes they can't get they, they can't do it all themselves. And I think Conte's, you know, the, the, the fans are looking to Conte to say, look, you're this elite guy, change something up and bring in Sanchez on. Like, that's a madness. It's ridiculous, yeah. Like, I, I, my friends were, were getting on to me saying, oh, you're a Conte apologist, you're this, you're that and the third, when I was basically... Um, defending some of his actions against Brighton because against Brighton where we lost 1-0 okay granted he I felt he I felt like he has every right to believe in his shape but he brought on Lucas Moura then he brought on Harry Winks and nothing changed against Brighton and then the last sub of Steven Bergman he brings him on with like with like three or four minutes to go um and still doesn't change the shape. And I'm just thinking, like, bro, like, do something, please. He takes off Sun. And that was what ticked me off about the Brighton game. But I gave him the bly. I gave him the bly because I said, listen, it's your decision, whatever. But this Brighton one, like, I genuinely couldn't make sense of that Davison Sanchez. Do, do you think no that he's taking his eye off the ball because of the PSG links? You heard about apparently he wants the PSG job. Yeah. Do you think that's he's taking his eye off the ball because of that, and that's maybe affecting no. his management because he's not I, focused? I don't think so. I, I do think the PSG stuff is a distraction um, on, for our players, but I don't think he's taking his eye off the ball. I just think with him, he can be a bit stubborn in his ways. He can be a bit headstrong in his in his tactics. And he, listen, I I love his tactics. I I'm I'm an advocate for playing free at the back, but when you've exhausted your op, all options. You play in this shape and the, the opposition has sussed you out. And you know there's a player who requires you to change the shape to bring him on and get all your best players on the pitch, then just do it. Just do it. What would it what would it have cost him to change to change shape with the last sub against Brighton? What would it have cost him to change shape against against Brentford um on Saturday? Yeah. It could potentially be the difference between getting one point, six points, or, or, or zero points. And do you think though, Tobes, as well, like like I said this about Arsenal going into January saying that perhaps it's you know, coming back to haunt us. And I know that Tottenham bought, bought in January and we were we were crediting them for that. But do you think maybe the fullback situation is coming back to bite you now? That you've like, you, they're so integral into how Conte wants to play that if you're getting Conte, you need to back him. And I'm not, I'm not saying there was loads of fullbacks available in January, but surely there's someone better than Emerson Royale, Matt Doherty. Or, these players are trash. They're rubbish, yeah. And listen, I, I, I didn't like... <laughs> I didn't think the window was a good window. I know we signed some good players, but out of 10, I gave it. Well, I can't even remember what I gave it out of 10. Like um, I think it was like a, like a five or six out of 10. Like, um, Of course, the two signings we've had have gone on to make monumental impact on our team, but the team was still lacking. But I'm not, to be honest, I'm not going to go with the excuse of, of of poor fullbacks. We knew, we've we've known we've had poor fullbacks since, um, since, since the end of the January window. We are where we are. The fact of the matter is, we built ourselves into a, we built up a good position even with those dead fullbacks um, after the Aston Villa game. So it was in our hands. We were, in a, we were in a really, really good position, and we've just fucked it up now. So I think the players need to look at themselves now. And I think Antonio Conte, looking at these last two results, he needs to do something to um, to get us firing again. Yeah, it's an interesting one. I think, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, man. Uh, whoever's, uh, whoever doesn't make it, I feel like they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna really have themselves to blame because it's not, it's not like it's Man United. You know what I'm saying? It is, it is the two of you that are, whoever gets it will be maybe overachieving slightly. Some people will say, 
And whoever doesn't get it is a missed opportunity. Um, is the, maybe the way to look at it. But yeah, bro. All I'm saying is, is that that Liverpool away game you can scratch that off Tottenham because the way Liverpool are playing right now, they ain't no hope in hell. I can see them dropping points. Like this is why I still think, even though I have City as obviously favourites for that title, I, I just if if City drop points once, it's done. Like Liverpool are just not dropping anything. They're they're moving like a machine. They're so. Um, when Origi's coming on and scoring against Everton, a, a guy that we ain't heard of, we only seem to hear about him when he wants to score the winner in a game. Again, mm. West Ham, against Everton. Like, this guy, I don't know, people are sleeping on him. I feel like in the market, on a free, people need to be maybe looking at this guy because he just constantly, constantly scores goals every single time. So, it, I, know what, I don't know if it was just because it's a West Ham, maybe. I, I feel like... I have a job. I could see Spurs potentially getting a point from that if they go about it smart. And yeah, Liverpool game, yeah, Liverpool game because they can Spurs. Uh, Liverpool showed that they can be frustrated. They can, if you if you play compact, right, and you don't give them much space. Like Everton are just terrible. They're a terrible, terrible football team, right, with terrible defenders, like really bad players. But Everton really gave them a go, like That's gave true. them a run for their money. And I think if you go about the game in a smart manner you could frustrate them and potentially get a point out of it. Obviously, that's not what you're putting your money on, but I feel like that's a game that Spurs players will rise to the occasion of the big game. I know I was, you know, I'm bantering him, but like... First I, goal, I Lawless. First goal. First goal yeah, is key first, in that game. Key. I, yeah. I think, I think to, to be fair though, I think you, I think you have, I think you raise a fair point. Like, I'm looking at that game and I'm, I'm marking that one as a loss. But in terms of the styles, I actually think that game sort of suits. Yeah. So that game probably suits Spurs more than most because, for the most part, we'll have Liverpool coming on to us. Of course, the the ripple effect of that is: <laughs> can your defense hold out exactly. and exactly. withstand the barrage? Because they're can, they're can be Emerson playing... Chicken Royale handle exactly. uh, Luis Diaz gonna... on the left hand side? I don't no, know. No one can. expected them to they're get gonna... points in City, and they took six off from this yeah. season. That's the they... thing. Yeah. They ain't gonna. They ain't gonna be playing Tyler Morton in the midfield this time. They're gonna be playing Fabinho and Thiago, who have mid in midfielders who can find who can find those passes quicker um, and defensively, who are much stronger and won't give us the 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 freedom to play like we did when we played them in the reverse fixture. But I do think the way they play, the way they the way Liverpool set up their defensive line. In light of the VAR stuff as well, I, I do think that that can that can play into our hands if we're clever. But I think you can get <laughs> goals. It's just whether you can defend. That's the problem. This is it. Like That's saying this now, Liverpool. Liverpool haven't lost a game for as long as I can remember. I don't think they have. They lost the Premier League game this calendar year. I don't think they have. Don't think. Have so, they? No. I don't I remember. It's nuts. What they're doing is a madness. Like I, 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 I right honestly... now is ridiculous. Honestly. So exactly. So 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 like. You're asking for a lot for Spurs to go there and win. I don't think Spurs are going to win this game, but I feel I feel like I feel like we have enough to go there and not treat this as a as a free hit. We have to treat this as a must win game. Do you get what I'm saying? Even if you don't win, whatever, just try, it. just try and go for it, bro. Hundred mm, um, percent. The last thing I was going to do on this show before we wrap up was um, go through um, our biggest flops, like the bit, and I'm talking about. Since you've been watching your clubs, one to eleven, just picking the biggest, biggest, baddest flops and making a disgusting team out of it, because um, <laughs> because I feel like everybody always goes with the the best elevens or the best. But I'm talking about since you've been watching your club, the worst players that you've seen um, play for your club and and putting an eleven together, because I feel like um, when you put this team together, it's gonna be it's gonna be an absolute stink fest, but. I'll start with uh I'll start with Lawless in goal. In goal in goalkeeper. Think <laughs> think about it. Think about it. I know I know I'm springing it on you. Obviously for me in terms of flops you could probably a lot of people will say Kepa. I know Toby got into a lot of arguments with people on Twitter about Kepa Kepa being the biggest flop in the Premier League. So crap. But I would say that would be incorrect considering that at least he's contributed to trophies. Considering mm, right. he's rubbish. Cons I'm considering sorry. Pepe he's, similar he's price. I don't know garbage. if that will fall into it for, for pots. 
He's if, garbage. I'm sorry. Toby, Toby got a run. Garbage. What are we He's doing? Are we doing this for just hours, Mitis, or like all of us? What What are we doing here? We'll do a combination. So if we'll we'll, okay. we'll pick our own goalkeeper from our own club, and we'll pick the worst goalkeeper. The out worst one out of four. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we're picking it for out of Spurs, Arsenal. Okay. Yeah. Um, but who are you putting forward for West Ham? So I, I know who I'm going for. It's easy, but who are you going for? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. You got to say the biggest. Yeah, Biggest yeah, and then we choose the who's the worst out of the four Roberto, of us. Yeah. Surely. Oh, who's the worst? Right, four of us. Mm. Roberto, you know I, think, I think, I think, um, yeah, obviously, if we're going all out, you're like, I have to say, like, Kepa, you know, is a shout. I think Mendy's had some shaky games, but I will ultimately, I can't <laughs> say. <I'm> Mendy? <laughs> You're yeah, taking the piss just because Mosawaku <laughs> scored a goal. Come on now, don't. No, don't that do whole game, he was shaky. Yeah, man. he had a bad game, but come on, this is the biggest. You see what I mean about this guy? No, but I tell you what, right? If I look at it, like Leno, <laughs> to lose his spot to Ramsdale like that, Leno was this guy who Arsenal fans were trying to tell us is on the level of De Gea, on the level of. Allison and stuff like that, comparing Leno to this guy, and that guy has Arsenal fans always that, over guys. Yeah, well, I know, yeah, but that's it. But like, he's he's to be like that first choice now, and to be relegated like that, I have to say, Leno, man, he's lost his place to to Ramsdale. Is that's, that what you were gonna go with, Potts? No, I, I misheard what we're doing. I thought this was of, of all time in the Premier League, so no, obviously we're only doing seen, this season. What you've seen. Uh, only season, from this se- this season, from, right? Yeah. I'm with you. So not from this I've season, w- just from what you've what you've seen as a as an Arsenal fan yourself. Like right, so we are going back in time, yeah. We yeah, are players that are still right. at the club. Yeah, no, it doesn't have to be at the club. He's going to go Almunia or Manoni or something. Yeah, Almunia, yeah. 100 Almunia, 100 Almunia. <laughs> The guy was the most unbelievable goalkeeper <laughs> I've ever seen, and we had him for what five years. And the guy was trash. I love like that. For me, so much. For me, he got to be one of the worst Arsenal players ever, not just goalkeepers ever. Like he's just I, I'm, trash. I'm changing my answer to Roberto. Sorry, based on the base. I told you it was Roberto. You just. Did. <laughs> I thought we, I didn't. I wasn't clear on what yeah, we were. Remember crazy. Roberto? My goodness, he was fucking awful. It was like yeah, a year and a half ago, right? <laughs> like he... you're fighting for relegation, and this guy was just doing stupidness, man. He oh, was the God. reason we were fighting for relegation. <laughs> he was the reason. <laughs> Is he, he was terrible. What's that? Is he probably, worse than Almunia? Probably not, because if, if Almunia no. was worse for longer, like I, I, I gotta go. Almunia could save a penalty. That was it. Then that's that is literally it. Nothing more about him. He's I'm not. Ke- Kepa doesn't even come anywhere near this Almunia convo. So we're not even doing that. Kepa I mean, is I, I, shit, Matisse, bro. Bro, no, he's not he as bad as Almunia. No, he's, shit, bro. he's not as yeah. bad as Almunia. Oh, sorry, he's not better as he's better than Roberto, but. Bro, Wait, Kepa did has Arsenal win the FA Cup? Was Almunia in the squad that won the FA Cup? You need to remember, Ke- Kepa, mean, in, Kepa in his won, first he? season for Chelsea. He won, it, he won the FA Cup, right? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but Kepa, that Kepa, good? Kepa in his first season was actually... Is that making good to you, Dan let me, let, me, let me finish. Kepa in his first season at Chelsea was actually know, decent. Man. Was actually decent. Kepa under Lampard was absolutely atrocious. Put up some of the worst goalkeeper metrics ever. But you only remember that season. You're not remembering the fact that under Sarri, he was actually decent. Won the Europa League. You're not Pops. remembering any of that. Now, Pops. under 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 Lampard, all of our defence was a clam. Pops. Zuma, Question. Rudiger. Go on. Uh, Question. Who played, in, everybody the, was who played in the FA Cup final that you won um, uh, in 2017 Late. midfield? In, in uh, 2017. Again. 2017, when you beat Chelsea, who played in the midfield? Ramsey who uh, and Chaka. And Jacka, right. Yeah. Okay. And that's the key question, Jacka. How did out of 10, what was Granit Jacka's performance that day? Because was it because I remember him having a great game that day? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Listen, Granite Jacka does a madness sometimes. Okay, then. Has Granit Jacka been one of the worst players that Arsenal have signed in the last uh, um listen? Six, I might be biased, years, but I can't stand the guy. I can't stand however. the guy. Okay, then. So you can acknowledge that he's played a part in you winning a trophy, but he's also been quite poor Trash. in a lot of yeah. games for Arsenal. Agreed. So I just want you to apply that same logic, Matisse, because your fan base <laughs> are doing this thing where because he because because he played his part in a trophy and that that absolves him of the, the the heaps of dog shit that we've seen from Kepa in his time at Chelsea. Would you have him? As, would, you have, would you have him on this uh, ahead of Almunia on the on the flops? No, 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 no. I, I'm not having him ahead of Al- Almunia. Was awful, but uh, but uh, Ch- Kepa, was the, Kepa is Kepa is Chelsea's worst goalkeeper since Roberto. Roberto is the worst, but 
Kepa is just like Almunia for me. I'm sorry. The, the deficiencies that Almunia has, it's the same thing with Kepa. You shoot from anywhere, you'll beat Almunia. It's the same thing. It's the same thing, bro. So then, so then <laughs> by your logic, then, if it's the same thing, she, he should be ahead of Almunia due to the price tag and the wages. Then, yeah. Then. Okay, cool. He's ahead of Almunia. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. you said it, not me. If it's if it Spurs, I'm going with horrendous Gomez. Gomez or Joe Hart, uh, I'll go with. Because... Uh, yeah, Joe Hart, he didn't play regularly, so I guess I got to do... But Joe Hart was fucking off when he came Joe to Joe Hart league. didn't do it. For me, I'm he going with Hart so, as well. Like, we going with players, so players from with. West Ham, I think, because he came with the reputation still of Man City. Do you know what I mean? Like His reputation was kind of shot when he went to Spurs, and he was always only ever coming in as a backup, really, in truth. Yeah. So yeah, Gomez. Is, go, Gomez. I'll, yeah. I'll go with um, Herelia Gomez then, because he, he would have the odd... Again, he would have the odd good game here and there, but he made... So many horrible mistakes that it was crazy. Even do you remember the one against you, Chelsea? Yes, I think it yeah. was. Um, we we beat you. So Sandro scored an amazing goal at Stamford Bridge. Like, yeah, at but Stamford he, Bridge, he made some ridiculous error. And he, Lampard, I think it's the Lampard went under him, so Lou, who went who won it right at the end because of a fucking horrendous Gomez mistake. Man, he was oh he was bad. He was awful. Mm. He was horrible. What about um centre backs? Let's just go with one centre back. Let's go like one per position. Let's not even go two. Let's just go one per position. Uh, centre back Aspers. Centre back from Chelsea. Actually... <laughs> There's a few. This is gonna get sticky. There's a few. Oh, Arsenal definitely got quite a few. Man, we got about twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Skilachi, Mustafi, oh. um, uh, uh, Sigan, uh, Sylvester, Senderos. They'll begin with an S. Senderos, oh fuck. Senderos Scott, to Spurs. He started, oh god, he was bad. Scalacci, Scalacci was the worst one. Um, he was awful. Kabul had one good season. Chelsea had That's actually three good Sanderbacks. Davison Sanchez for us right now, he's really bad right now. There's a few, there's a few. There's definitely a few at Spurs. I want to say, <laughs> oh, nah, Dawson actually had some decent. Get, he had a decent, decent couple of games for Spurs, man. I can't even, I can't even put him there. Like, even though I didn't rate him highly, mm. uh, we, I think we've about, had some pretty strong centre backs. I'm, it's hard. I think about it because we had who we had, we had Led, Ledley King. No one's coming to mind for me. Our defense is always. Oh. Man, we've we've definitely had the worst defenders. To, we could list them off. Tottenham, to be yeah, fair, have yeah. actually had some decent ones. Vertonghen, Alderweire, King, Chelsea, likewise, Terry Cahill, Cavalio, the list goes on. West Ham and Arsenal have definitely got the worst defenders here. Like, even West Ham have probably got better than Arsenal in the last 10 years. Yeah, like, I feel like, I feel like I have to cast my memory back to go to someone that I could say, because every, a lot of our defenders I've liked over, over the years. Um, you know, if I even go far back as, like, you know, James Collins, love James Collins, James Tompkins, who's now uh, like, I feel like I'm going to have to really search the memory banks to go back and go ones that I was like, yeah, that guy, that guy was, was terror. I need to try and think about this um, because, I mean, some people would say that Diop's a bit of a flop, but I don't know. He's been a flop. I like, I like Diop as well, but he's been, he's been a real big flop. At West Ham, let's he be. He hasn't real. lived up to that first season. I'm trying to cast my mind back. Yeah, I can't think of West Ham ones. You know, uh, there'll be many. Come on, this is a team that's been relegated twice in the last 15 years. They'll be, they'll yeah. be contenders. Roger that, it's Johnson, almost like Dan's trying to do a cover up for his team. Oh, you don't want to, you don't want to let them. You don't want to let them. Roger Johnson was tight, man. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, isn't it? now we had no bad team players. We had no flops. We just unlucky. Uh, 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 no, but yeah, uh, maybe Roger Johnson. If I go back that far, but there's probably like people screaming at me. Oh, this player. I'm going to go. Oh, like as soon as I come off that guy. But um, yeah, just like it's just for so long we've had like centre backs that I've been okay with. You know, yeah. we, you haven't had most for lo- like proper shockers, have you? I don't think. Yeah, like, I, it's been a know, position I, I that think... we haven't rotated a lot. Really insane. I think out of the one said I'm probably gonna go with Davinson Sanchez and Scalacci, you know. Sanchez, well, how much did he cost Topes? 47 40, million. 42, 42 million. Like pff, man, that's that yeah. is a nightmare. Yeah, like that bad, is a yeah. nightmare for me. So I think Scalacci and Sanchez out of the ones. Nah, said, no way. Roger Roger Johnson was worse than Sanchez to me. I'm sorry. Roger Johnson was fucking garbage for us. Oh Rubbish. I've got one for us, Bullaroos. <laughs> oh yeah, he 
He wasn't, wasn't good. good. <laughs> he wasn't good. He's, he's the worst. He's, him and Tal Ben Aim from Bolton are the two that I can think of that are just like <laughs> meaty, meaty, meaty centre backs at Chelsea. Um, and he, he's wearing the number nine shirt as well. It's very strange. Very meaty. How long was Roger Johnson there for, though, Lawless? Um, like a season know, or what? Yeah, I don't think he, he wasn't. I don't think he was. He wasn't here long. He, yeah, that's what I mean. he didn't play a lot I of think... games to be fair. He didn't play a lot. No, of games. that's what I mean. Like, I think it's a bit harsh when you get someone who's got a handful of okay. games. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think like... was... Was, Scalacci be... was Scalacci better than Dav... Davison Sanchez, though? At least Sanchez had one strong season for Spurs, his first season. Scalacci, when I don't was he really having a good time. season for Arsenal? Yeah, yeah, but Scalacci was a, like a free transfer, man. I think it was two million. Davison Sanchez, 42 million, like the Kepa yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I get, it, I get it. 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 Yeah. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. I won't argue that. All right. Full, full back, Chicken Royale. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just going Wait. both both sides, just as a full there's back. So many, there's so many options. Chicken Royale. Doherty. Tavares. Um, Kalasinac. Oh, oh, Kalasinac. Oh, fuck oh. me. He's awful. Uh, uh, for me, for me <laughs> he's the one. <laughs> he's, he's terrible. He was Reason so bad. Kalasinac. Oh, my days. That guy. Bellerin. Bellerin's a bad one. Ever, but... Or or are below her like recently for us, mm. both complete wastes of times of signings. Zabaleta for you. We played no Zabaleta done a good for job. You. For us. For you. For, what do you mean? Zabaleta, you mean no, Zabaleta. Right Apparently, Zabaleta he was good okay. at West Ham. I think he, he was, was right good at West, West, West Ham. Yeah, he, he was had okay, some, wasn't he? He had oh. some good games. For, there were there were games I remember no. Zabaleta was getting torched. Come on. Yeah, but and that I love his that. last season. Like yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. So so he was he wasn't good. No, but he was good. That was his last season where he was like 30 odd years old. Like, that was, but I mean, because I, I like when we played games like against Liverpool and we had Zabalet on one side and we had Patrice Everett the other side. Yeah, that was Jesus. a disaster. But wow. Zabaleta, you know, that's, you know, pace, that's pace for you right there. Let's <laughs> no, put a pin in this. I can't put Zabalet worst. Let's not. No, you can't. No, man. No, God, we've had, we've had uh, Kalasinac, Andre Santos. They were both terrible at left back. Right back, Nelson Vivas, Oleg Luzhny. Even Carl Jenkinson, to be fair, like how he got to Arsenal for that long, like Jesus, like a twelve-year contract. Was it, what was it? Some of your fans used to call him the new one. Gary Neville. That's what yeah. I heard. Yeah, yeah, man. Like, you know what? He was Gary. decent for us, and still probably one of the the best goalkeepers we've ever had. Just clean sheets, everything. <laughs> we had uh, Baba Rahman who we signed, but we never saw him play for us because he was just sent out on loan all the time. So we had who was that? Like, Basingwa as well. He was a nightmare for you, Matisse. Yeah, Basingwa was a bit of a, a wild one. He was wild. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. Um, not, and Del Horno, remember, was it Del Horno you bought? And he was supposed to be like the next best. Thing yeah, Del Horno, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, yeah. Probably <laughs> bigger, that's probably bigger, bigger flop. Um, um, now, nah, do you know who, who Chelsea? You didn't play a lot of games, so you Quadrado, you lot bought him for like 30 odd. He's a winger, he's a winger, he, but he's a winger, wing back, whatever. But he, nah, he, he I'll, I'll, I have him, but I put him as a winger because we yeah, signed okay, him as a fine. winger, yeah, for, I, for um, yeah. Carl Norton for Spurs, he was, he was. He was I've got poor. a lot of Chelsea forwards, trust me. He was poor. <laughs> Paul Norton was poor. Um, I'm trying to think of who else. Who else? Was, no, Choluca was, Choluca was good for Spurs, in my opinion. Choluca, uh, do you know what? Every, if they are a flop, you could say someone like, basically, if you sign them, but they're just not able, you're not able to play them, I feel like, because they're so Baba bad. Babarahman then for us, because he's literally been injury prone as hell. We have not seen anything of him. I don't know how much we signed him for. Oh, yeah, Chicken chicken Royale has to be number one for me. Like, he's... Yeah. A, Horrible fullback, and when you look at the money that we paid for him, he's fucking. Is he, is he worse than Kalasinac, Tobes? At least Kalasinac could attack. At least Kalasinac could attack. He's just a bozo defensively. Um, this this chicken royale, like he's actually horrible, <laughs> horrible. <laughs> yeah. He's horrible. Um, bro. I, I, do you know what, what? I'll say though is I don't think I don't think chicken royale. It's mad. He's he's a really bad player, but he doesn't really make like a lot of like. Errors. Errors lead into goals. Like, he's whereas Kalasnac, like, he's just an absolute bozo. So maybe Kalasnac yeah, might be worse. Mm. He was so we both bad. have one it's side on each, if you wish. I, um, I, re I, I remember, like, we had Arbeloa, and, it, and I've, everyone forgot he still played for the club. Like, we hadn't seen him in ages. <laughs> and all of a sudden, this picture goes around of Twitter, like, while we're playing. I can't remember who he was playing. It was Man United or something at home. He was literally playing at home. And his picture serves, he's in the local pub watching the game with the fans. Like, with a pint. <laughs> Literally, the pub ran the corner from the stadium, and everyone's like, "What the fuck? I mean, this guy still even still played for us." Like, he was, like, and he come with a lot of. He wasn't as bad as the others, though, Lawless. He's not as bad That's as Kalasnach so or Royale for me. Uh, Kalasnach, another player that Arsenal fans hyped up to the moon. 
Massive. Right. Because he was player of the year in Germany, mate. So we had the next one, Carlos. Team of the year for Schalke. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Antonio at right back, definitely. Okay. Antonio at right back was a disaster. Why? Like, where? <laughs> uh, Slavin Bilic, man, he, he thought he could turn him into this top right back. That was the I love Slavin, <laughs> yeah. But that was his biggest downfall. That cost us. That cost us. us he was trying to play. I, I forgot. I forgot that guy. Yeah, I remember, I remember that. I think we could have got top four if he did not do that. Mm. If he did not put Antonio right back. But yeah, there's so many names. Let's do uh, midfield. Very Doherty as well for Spurs. Doherty. I said him at the beginning. Yeah, He's definitely. definitely. One. Not, not, not. Um, not. Um, You're talking about Gary Doherty. Gary Doherty. Gary Doherty, Doherty, Doherty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, not. Yeah. Um, not Matt. Not Matt. Doherty. Yeah, that yeah. he was. Or oh, that's a great shout, Gary Doherty. He was. So Rubbish. bad. When did he, he play? So... I don't remember him. Uh, 2000, 2001. Oh, okay. All right. Um, he what about sent, centre midfielders? Um, drink water for me is right at the top of this. 40 million from fucking... No, I, I, will happily, I will happily accept some of the names I've said so far, but I am not putting any midfielder. We've had like, what, Danielson and Inamoto. That's about it. But mm. and the rest of them have been decent for Arsenal, I'd say. There's not I'd many that have been like shockers. Drink water Ooh. is drink water and Bakioko are my top two. Both of them 40 million oh, apiece. Oh, yeah, drink water, shockers. Absolute can I, can horrendous. I put, can I put forward Hossam Ghali for Tottenham, please? <laughs> he scored against Chelsea, so boy. Hossam Ghali was... That Hossam guy was Ghali trash. Was so Undombele, bad. Undombele is getting on here. 58 million. I'm sorry. I don't want to hear no. Yeah, he's, 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 he's... Yes. The money. Yes, yes. Drag him. Let me land. For the money we paid for, I can... You can put him there. Cool. But Spurs have genuinely had worse midfielders than Undombele. Like, yeah, I, I look know. at someone like Paulinho. Like, Paulinho, like Hossam Ghali. He cost a third of the price. He cost 17 million. He came with such a big reputation. True, true, and true. he was fucking awful. He yeah. was so bad. Yeah, yeah true. <laughs> no, was bad. A bad one. And Don Belly, yeah. Uh, the biggest <laughs> thing ever done for Spurs fans is scoring uh, an equaliser against West Ham. <laughs> and not getting knocked out anyway. For another club. It's not true. Gave him something to little Sarah, 60 right? million. Oh, that was Endo, that was Endo a flop, man. Awful at Tottenham. I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 awful. Awful. For me, La Celso was worse than Endon Belly. La Celso has to be there. Mm. Yeah, that's a good shot. It's also in Dom. Um, he, he he did develop into a, a useful squad player, but at the time, Sissoko for thirty million. Yeah. What about money. what about um what was his name? The guy from Wigan you bought there it was like loads of money, twenty five million. Palacios was it? Palacios. <laughs> he was. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think Palacios is okay. Not having that. Not having that. Palacios is okay. Palacios. Palacios was actually decent for Spurs. He was decent for Spurs. I'm not having that one. That's such he a came in and made a big, made a big that impact. That was weird buying him, him, wasn't it? Yeah. He was good, though. He was he was a good signing. And I think, unfortunately for him, he sort of tailed off when that madness with his brother happened because they kidnapped his brother. And I think his brother... Oh, got, I remember oh, that now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember so, that. They signed so him we, and Chimbonda, didn't you, from Wigan? And it was like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chimbonda. Tottenham, a, Tottenham we had a couple. Back. We had, like... Dean Marnie as well. He scored a screamer. He scored a screamer. I can't remember what team he scored a screamer against, and he fucked off. Um, yeah, we've had we've had we signed we signed Steve Sidwell, another person we gave the number nine. Oh, team. what was that all about? That was Lewis madness. Holtby. Jesus Christ, we signed him for one point five oh, million. Holtby, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he he came with a rep. I thought he was good. he was so shit. Oh my god, he was so shit. Oh god, <laughs> boy, like Lewis oh, fucking Holtby, man. Oh, God. Mm. I, I would say for us, I'm looking at Carlos Sanchez. I think he was one of our highest oh, paid who players. Who the fuck is that? <laughs> he was <laughs> awful. Was it who? Carlos Sanchez. He was so bad. Oh, no, I do remember him now. Yeah, he, he was, was awful. so bad at West Ham. Yeah, yeah he, he was, was awful. Mark Noble as well. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's a Mark Noble. Yeah. 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 Wrong. One of the <laughs> most underrated midfielders ever. Now, I'd say Havard Norfolk, he was terrible for us. Probably no one remembers. Oh, he's him. Arsenal. Yeah, he was Arsenal. You remember him? Havard yeah. Norfolk. He was at Arsenal he was when he was 18. Good. He yeah, was he's better supposed to be he... wicked. Do you know what? When he had, we dropped him in centre back, he's actually started looking decent. But as a, as a midfielder, he was he was just really shocking for us. But I'd have to go with Carlos Sanchez overall. Like, he be one of our highest paid players. Um, and yeah, just he was poor, man. He was so poor. So that'd be my. Shout. I think for for me to finalize my list, I think Ver um, Veron as well, the Argentinian. Oh man, I don't, wow! I don't think yeah. he did anything for us. Uh, so he's another one that goes onto the list. And maybe uh, who else is there? Oh, there's one other guy. One other guy. 
um, Smirtin. Is that a Russian Smirtin? Smirtin? Alexi Smirtin. Alexi Smirtin. Yeah. No, the one, the one that uh, Matisse you signed, that Van Ginkel, whatever. He, like, oh what? yeah, yeah. yeah Van Ginkel, very <laughs> injury prone. He's very young, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let him have a pass because he was very young. But he's yeah, he had a lot of injuries. He didn't do shit with us, unfortunately. It's, a, it's an unfortunate story. A lot of injuries there. Um, let's say wingers now. Um, wingers, Cadrado, definitely for Chelsea. I'm not going to bring in loan deals because Charisma would be on that for Chelsea, but I'm just going to say it's permanence. Cadrado definitely goes on that list for Chelsea as one of the big, big... Man, big I think ours, uh, ours is clear, man. Fucking ours is easy. Willie, Willian, bruv. <laughs> Willian, oh be. my God. Willian, has to 100%. Be. Has to be. Ah, no, no. Pepe, Pepe, Pepe. Pepe, no. oh, listen, Pepe. Pepe. Listen, Pepe, Pepe, Pepe was oh, better than Willian. I don't care what yeah, anyone says, Pepe was better than Willian. For, you didn't pay 70 mil for Willian. Yeah, yeah, but that's Pepe, but Pepe delivers Pepe at least. William does not deliver. Pepe is actually Pepe, when he's given a chance. Me, when he's given same, a chance, it's same tier as as Kepa, Pepe. Nah, yeah. bro. No, nah, I'm not having that. No, nah, I'm not having that. Like you said, you nah, I'm not having that. Kepa's worse than Pepe. Kep, Pe- nah. Kepa's worse Kepa. than Pepe. Kepa's been Pepe worse. scored sixty. Pepe Pepe's scored sixteen goals last season. Yeah, he's contributed. To, to, he scored Arsenal. 16 goals last season. How many? How many other? How many other players did that? Ke- Kepa's got no goals, so you win that one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Kepa's, had, Kepa's had more good games for Arsenal than Kepa's had for Chelsea. Yeah, now nah, with Topes, hundred percent there. William was worse than signing than Pepe, hundred percent. He was hundred you know percent. He started improving towards the end of his time at Arsenal, as he um, always does, because he wants that new contract. Yeah, yeah. Tottenham, Tottenham definitely got some wingers here. Yeah, we've yeah, I mentioned some. I mentioned Clinton in. Clinton NG. Oh, Clinton NG. I remember um, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's the other one that we signed? The Marseille, the guy. Um, oh, what's his name? We signed him for Marseille for 11 million. And, uh, we signed Sissoko as a winger, to be honest. So he was a, a shocking winger. Um, I think more from Chelsea. There's a couple more. There's a couple more. I remember Javinho no, like for us was shocking as well. Javinho, oh, Jesus God, Christ! Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, Glenn, Glenn Helder, Glenn Helder, we had him. Oh my days, he was poor. Jesus. Who else did we have out wide that I really didn't like? I'm trying to remember. Um, yeah, no, nah, there's, 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 there are a few. Stephen Peter for Spurs wasn't good. He was Mar- he was really poor. Mar- Marco Marin wasn't really a winger, but he was an attacker. Marco, I Marin. remember him. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From signed, that Brady. was a random signing. Yeah, that, that he used to be good though, Marco Marin. Yeah, that didn't go too well for us at all. He used to um, be good. Marco Marin's definitely up there. I'm trying to think yeah. of more names. I can't. Some of them, you know, when you just got players that were just decent or average, you can't really say f- like massive flop. They contributed enough where you can't really draw them out too much. Um, up front, Chelsea have a field day. Absolute field day with the up oh, front. Right. Winger wise, wait. Before we get there, obviously, like mm. West Ham, because my one's been in my head straight away. And for me, it's I have to say Freddie Lundberg. For how hyped I was when we signed him, I was so excited. The guy, when he did play, he didn't pull up any trees. And then he was injured for most of the time. For such, for such a huge, huge... He was finished. He was finished. It was, I was one for first, but I wouldn't say he's... Because he, he, he served a purpose. Sorry, sorry. Lawless. Um, I just wanted to. Lamella is a is worth a mention. I wouldn't put him there as the worst, even though he was he wasn't a good winger for Tottenham. Mm. But I would mention him. Will, um, Willie or Lundberg for me. Those that's a good yeah. shout, Lawless, because he was he was done. He was done. Yeah, yeah, yeah Lundberg, but I, I remember like finished. feeling like because you know obviously you know when we signed him, obviously it was still a point of maybe okay he's not good enough to play for Arsenal anymore. That's Arsenal when Arsenal were good. But, you know, imagine what he could do at West Ham. And I was just, I don't know, I let myself get hyped for it. And then uh, Gokhan Toure, another player that came with a lot of hype. Yeah. Buzzing. I remember um, uh, Arsenal fan, you might know him, um, um, Mems, uh, someone I know. And he was like, yeah, oh my God, you guys are getting... And look, I don't play because he's tearing it up in, in Turkey, right? And, and a lot of was like, your guys are getting a player here, this guy. I can't believe you signed him. And I got even more hyped. And the guy was just terrible. Absolutely terrible. We've had players, Pablo Barrera or people like that. But yeah, I feel like Lingard... Uh, Lingard. No, definitely not Lingard. Lingard, <laughs> Lingard you man were um, worshipping Lingard. Lundberg is personal for me because I was hyped. Mm. Okay. Um, and finalise on strikers. West Ham are winning this because we've signed like like 
50 Shevchenko, though. Shevchenko, massive disappointment for Chelsea. Torres. I know Chelsea fans will go mad. Oh, he scored in the Champions League against Barcelona. He did the Europa League run. We bought Torres for the Premier League. Do you know what I'm saying? He Matai did Kesman. Uh, Matisse. Kesman. Matai Kesman. Mutu, Kesman. Mutu, yeah. Mutu as well. Oh, yeah. Mutu. Gregor, Gregor Rajak for Spurs. That's one. Um, like Spurs have got many topes. Come on, man. Yeah. You've got so many. Like, how many have you got? Sergio Rebrov. Remember when you said Rebrov and it was like Rebrov? Oh my God, Rebrov. Held a Postiga. He was yeah, shocking. Yeah, just meant him now. Postiga yeah. was dead. Soldado. Um, Soldado uh, was rubbish. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, Soldado um, was really bad. Janssen. 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 Yeah, yeah. man. Uh, there's, there's, there's quite a few. There's actually quite a few. Scary. Nicholas Bentner on there for Arsenal. Uh, you know yeah, uh, to me, to me though, Sano Yaya Sonogo or Francis Jeffers for me ahead of Bentner, they, they were terrible, man. Francis Jeffers come from an under 21 England like record, a bit like Eddie and Ketia. So, I mean, oh, this guy's gonna be wicked. Francis Jeffers was terrible, he's great forever. And we signed him, he was terrible. Yaya Sonogo, like, he come on in a cup final and did some things for us to win us that cup. That's it, he was dreadful, absolutely mm. awful player. So, those are the two, there's the two for me, I would say. I hated, probably. I hated. Our fans won't say it, but I hated Lorente at Spurs. I hated him hmm. so much. But I would have been worse because he Back just wasn't to good. He wasn't good for Spurs. But um, another one that I forgot to mention as well, Dama uh, for Tottenham. He was shit. He's not striker though, but he. I he forgot was to shit. mention Ross Barkley as well. Yeah. Um, I was going to mention Ross Barkley. Yeah. yeah. Ross Barkley needs to go on that list as well. Shock. Right. Look, look at. I had to get up. I want to get up the full list. Right. With apps gold. Like West Ham win this hands down right? <laughs> like easily easily win this a jetty 8 million 12 apps zero goals Sebastian Halle, I love Halle. 45 mil 53 apps 14 goals Lucas Jesus. Perez 19 apps oh my god I remember that one oh yeah, oh, yeah. About Arsenal we paid 10 mil for Hugel three apps zero goals what about Ene Valencia I think Elevator he was all right, was like a winger, but he was de- he was terrible in his last season. But he had he had a good partnership with Saka. Um, yeah, but it. yeah, obviously, look, uh, Hernandez. We we paid sixteen mil for him, sixty three at seventeen goals. Ashley Fletcher, yeah, IU twenty million. We got our money back. Caleri, absolutely terrible. Zaza, man. 11 at oh, zero Zaza. goals. Jesus. I remember when his shot went out for a throw in, like MNEK, <laughs> MNEK, man. Yelovich. Oh, Yelovich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Croatian. Some of these players. Who's that Everton though? Uh, Yelovich. I think he was better. He, he was finished. Uh, he was he was finished. Shamak. We Shamak. have Pato. Pato. Oh, he was so bad. Pato we, my, my, look, 45 oh, yeah, man. You could pick any of those, to be fair. <laughs> Vaz, hey, no, he was good in the championship, Vaz, hey. Like some of the, like we've signed so, like Benny McCarthy. The guy was like, he come on like a sumo wrestler. Robbie Keane, he was a disappointment. I was hyped when we signed him. He was a flop. Denver Bar, I wish we had him longer. Mido. Oh, me. God. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Christ. Milan, 11 at four goals. You've had hell? some Why shockers, bro. Bloody hell. You've had yeah, some I've shockers. Got lo- I've got a lot of lone strikers like Pato, Higuain, uh, Falcao. These guys, all loan deals. Don't Maratta's there for you. Like, Maratta. Oh, so my goodness. Maratta. Yeah, yeah. Maratta, thank you for reminding me. Kesman Maratta. as well. I don't think, yeah, I I think Kesman, Kesman was a flop. Yeah. Maratta was the, really worst, the, the worst that I really got to see up close because Maratta was horrendous. Oh, my God. I nearly forgot about him. Yeah, he was so bad. Have, I feel like... No, you, you, you lot didn't have Benjani, did you? Maratta was so bad. So, so, so. Wait, West Ham, you lot had um, Picky on. Yeah, Picky on. I liked I liked Picky on at Portsmouth. I liked him at West Ham. Mm. He weren't. He didn't pull up trees, but he weren't like some of the people that we've had. He weren't as bad as some of them. You've just said, yeah. yeah, like some of these players that hardly any goals. Frank Newball, nineteen apps, one goal. Diego Tristan, seventeen apps, three goals. Like hardly any appearances. Like all of these strikers, we've all of the strikers I've listed right don't even have like fifty goals between them. Like it's terrible, yeah, David. You, you, you've, you've cleared up. You've cleared up there, bro. I can't lie. Thirty four <laughs> apps, four goals, mate. It's oh my god, Emanik, you lot had Emanike, right? Yeah, Emanike. Yeah, we signed Emanike from a CSK Moscow. Emenike, everyone called him. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, like the the thing is, and it's it's very telling. 
that our two best strikers are players that we had to convert from wingers to strikers in Antonio and Anatovic. Because it has been just a horrendous True. position for us over the years. We're cursed. We had Andy Carroll, obviously. He was just injury prone, highest injury prone. He should get a read on a free, honestly. Have you seen, have you seen um, Anatovic this season? He's banged, he's banged in a couple goals for Bologna, you know. I think he's got like 12 or 13 league goals for them. Yeah, we should have signed him back, man. We should have got him because they got him cheap, like cheap, cheap. We should have. I don't he know was, why we didn't sign him. He was really like when when Moyes moved him central. He was really good for West Ham. I really had a lot of time for him. I can't lie. Mm. Yeah, he was. Good that for was uh, like yeah, he, he he was good there. But that's what I said. It's wingers. Maybe we only signed wingers. But Hugh Hugo was the one that stood out me. I don't know if you guys ever heard, but this oh, guy he was awful. You not signed him for like ten million from who was it? Was it Peterborough? You signed Preston. him from. Preston. Preston. But he's the guy didn't even kick a, he didn't kick him. He didn't kick him. Uh, bro, he was so shit. I said, who the fuck is this bum that West Ham have signed? I, he was so I, crap. I start. He was our only signing that we made on that window as well on deadline day, right? I was baffled. Like, West Ham fans were giving me so much stick. Like, give him a chance. His record in the championship in League One was bang average. Mm. Bang average. And he comes to West Ham. And honestly, one of the worst strikers I ever he was terrible. I think he's actually gotten better since he left. He started doing decent in the championship. I think oh. he left us a better player. But like, I was like, why are we paying 10 million for him? Everyone's like, we're signing Moyes is signing him for the championship. So if we get relegated, we've got him. <laughs> in the That's a wonderful logic to have. <laughs> yeah, he's record in the championship. Shit. Why are you signing a player from the championship? It's shit in the championship. <laughs> it was just like he Moyes has got his brother or something. He, works that Preston there was some sort of connection there yeah, yeah there it always is his always agent is. or something it was and I think Moyes was like yeah I'm not here for long so let me at least do something for the family like little bum, yeah or something like that but yeah, we, yeah we've <laughs> had some terrible terrible strikers and ones that just haven't fit but yeah Zaza was hilarious everyone was hyped up we literally signed him off the back of that Euros where he did that penalty I could we could do a whole show on West Ham strikers, yeah. man. I can't even get into this in fact. <laughs> All right, listen. We need to sign a listen. A sign of strike. Yeah, bro, I'm telling you, Origi from Liverpool good, on free. Oh no, but yeah, I take him as like not as the all and out first choice, but we need why? a, a you can need the I think he could account. do business, you know. Of course he could. But he could you think you think he can bang in 15 goals to 20 for West Ham? Yeah, I do. In a season, I definitely know. think he I can think, bang in. I think he can get 15 goals, you know. He, 100%. He's a sneaky one. I think he's he's 100 percent I, I, I think we should be looking man. at that. You guys, you guys don't realize how much I've suffered. Well, you kind of got a flavor of how much I've suffered with strikers. It's time for us to, to break have the point. Who do you want then? Who do you want then, Lawless? Who do you want then? <laughs> who do you want? Yeah. <sighs> You know, my, my dreams would be uh, Broja. I would love to get Broja. I don't think it's happening unless they can make weight. <laughs> Go get him, right? Go someone get him. Said to me, No, but someone said to me in, in the stream, they said to me, would you take 50 mil plus Gallagher and Broja for Rice? And I you was would? Like, oh, yeah, I said I would too. Yeah, that's, 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 that's even above his... That's even above his... That's his class. Team, that's a class deal. Value. That's a great deal. Mm. <laughs> would you take Lawless would you take Mitrovic from Fulham people are talking about him coming and oh, wow. banging in goals he hasn't done it in the Premier League so yeah yeah but like not to that level not to that level but yeah yeah, he has done it but like yeah we, we need we need I, I said I would take Puki because I think he would fit our system and he'd get but he's old though that's the thing yeah he's, he's like, like 30, 30, 30, 30, isn't he? we need two strikers so we, we definitely need two strikers I think his age works against him, but oh, no, I, I want someone. And, and Antonio not doing it for you now. Listen, the guy. Listen, <laughs> why, 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 why are we talking about Antonio? Antonio because you just said we need two strikers. Like, what happened to 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 better than Harry Kane, Antonio? Whoa, whoa, whoa! He was whoa, better than Harry Kane. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, okay. Right, then. Where, where was yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, Hold on a second. <laughs> was he better than Harry Kane? <laughs> Sorry, was he not better at than Harry Kane at the time? Oh, give it was a rest, not, man. Was he not it's, better it's, than Harry Kane? Did you say this when he was on loan at Leighton Orient or Mill? When he was on, when he was on fire, when he was on fire, and he banged in like six goals in like four appearances. Oh, where was Kane? No, where no, was Kane? no, no. I'm shutting this down. Harry Kane. I'm shutting this down. Where was wild. Kane? Kane was sitting there looking at pictures of all the Man City players, all happy and celebrating. Like <laughs> you know that you know that picture that there's that thing of Wolverine, yeah, from X Men when he's in bed and he's looking at the picture of like Gene, Gene. From, uh, I know the what you're talking about, like, about, bro. He's like, oh, that was that was literally Kane in bed, yeah, looking at pictures of like the Man City players holding up trophies, going, oh, why is that me doing nothing? <laughs> at the time, Antonio was better than Kane for that period of time. 
Man. Case All closed. Right. But listen, we're going to wrap up because it's been a long one. And, uh, it's closed. I, I, if, if I even allow that conversation <laughs> even, to even go even on, there's going to be a madness said. on this show. I'll leave that for next yeah. week. Um, Toby, let them know where to find you, bro. Pleasure as always. <laughs> Tapping Tobes across all socials. That's it. There you go. All right. Short and sweet. Do you know what I'm saying? Said by a man who's under pressure in that top four race, it would seem. Um, Lawless, let them know where to find you. Big, big first day coming up. Eyes will be, will be watching. Yes, you can find me West Ham Fan TV at D Lawless on Twitter. Yeah, come and follow us for if you want some some European football flavor and that you know you know where to come. It's West Ham. You can also you gotta check out on Twitch Dan Damo and Jay. So me and my friends, I've got a, a damn near broken hand. It's always chaos. Um, so Mate, where did you get those Korean wings from? I want to try them. It's no, it's this sauce. It's Korean capsicum sauce. So we you oh, marinated okay. it. I'll send you the link if you want it, mate. Yeah, please. Slap. Please. I want to see that video. I, I want to see that video. I keep telling people Korean chicken slap, so I don't know about this Korean sauce, but right now, Korean, it's, 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 it's a mad, the food is mad. It's mad. We're very underrated. Um, Pots, let them know. Let them know, bro. Where to find Cheers, you. man. Uh, pleasure coming on again, bro. Uh, at that Arsenal 87 on Twitter and now Instagram as well. Uh, and me and Lee Judges run a channel together, Lee Judges TV. On Wednesday night, Tobes and Dan are joining us for a top four chat. Uh, so don't miss that one. That should be good. Uh, and um, yeah, come over, like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And thanks for having me on, Matisse. There you go. Well, guys, make sure you subscribe to everybody. Links are in the description as always for me. Um, obviously, previews will be dropping um, at some point when it comes down to the Man United game uh, because ugh, that's a big game at Old Trafford on Thursday for us. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure exactly who we're going to have on yet. I'm just, just figuring it out. But I will be um, on United stand with Flex. Um, so that might be coming out maybe after this has been uploaded. So, yeah. United stand. You mean United View? Oh, United View, United View, United View. Um, so, yeah, there, check that out. And, yeah, big up your damn selves. Uh, make sure you subscribe to everybody. In a bit, people. Peace.